Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is October 9, 2021. I want to talk about one of my favorite stocks. It's PAG Seguro Digital, ticker symbol PAGS. It's a software play. They're in fintech. It's one of the most valuable brand in Brazil. And uh, stock tumbled big time. Many folks are wondering what happened here. Let's jump in core and see what happened to this uh, PAGS stock. So with that, let's jump in here. Why PAGS tumbled? So PAGS really down big time now. It's uh, the lowest close since May 13, 2021. Right now it's a, it, at a very low price, $38. So as you scan through here, if you look through the media, there is not too much coverage. I thought I'll do a quick coverage so you know what's going on here. And you can buy this great company at a very deep discount. So what's going on is, you know, in Brazil, we got a couple of uh, payment processors and there's a company called GetNet. This company is going to start trading in the Nasdaq stock exchange as well as in Brazil. So that's why the moment it, one of the third largest payment processor is uh, uh, becoming a public company, that's why Pagasoro, which is uh, fourth or fifth in the list, that's tumbled big time. Even Stone Co. also tumbled big time. So there's a cutthroat competition in Brazil in the payment processing world. These folks are giving a lot of deep discount to attract customers. That's what's going on here. The third biggest processor, GetNet. I think they are, they're also grow, growing very nicely. And uh, the moment they become public company, they can get more money and they can grow. That's the whole deal here. That's why PAG Zero, which is also growing nicely, tumbled big time because a competitor is going, going public and they get a lot, lot of money from the public markets. So that's the big news, is, big news here. That's why stock tumbled. Let's jump in here. Let's look at uh, the landscape of payment processors in Brazil. So if you look through Brazil here, we got uh, uh, Celio, uh, Reg, JetNet, Stone, which is Stone Co., and Pagasero. These are the big players um, in Brazil around the credit card processing. JetNet is the third, third largest. So these guys are going public. That's why Stone Co. and Pagasero, which is number three and four, they tumble big time. Let's, uh, you know, let's deep dive a little more and see if it's a good time to buy a great stock like Pagasero. Paga C Giro at this levels and take it from there. So let's jump in here. Let's look at what Pags do. Pags does. Pags it's it is a bank. It's it's an e-commerce company. Uh, it's a payment processor. It does a lot of things. So that's why it's really a digital fintech type play here. Uh, it's uh, growing very rapidly and one of the biggest brands in uh, Brazil. So that's all going for this company. I think it's a great company. It's a combination of multiple things here, e-commerce, bank, payment processor, and they're trying to become soup to nut type player here. And if you go through here, um, they are doing pretty nicely and they are consolidated TPV, grew by 85%. And as you scan through here, uh, they got uh, um, nice uptick in the uh, TPV here, 30, 85% year over year. And they also have an uptick in total payment volume here, 49% year over year. And they got a lot of active users, 12.2 uh, million active users. Overall, from an earnings perspective, from a you know, financial perspective, company is doing the right thing. They're growing like weed. That's, that's why this is a you know, very good brand in Brazil and company is also growing nicely indicated by their latest quarter as you can see here. And next let's uh, look at uh, Pagasero from uh, Pagasegiro from uh, uh, Glassdoor.com. According to Glassdoor, 85% recommend a front here. That's a you know, good uh, rate here. I think it's uh, pretty okay here. And if you look at Brazil in general, uh, vaccination rates are increasing. That's a good news. And that's why the growth uh, can, it can drive the growth in second half of 2021. And the economy contracted a little bit. I think now it's uh, showing some progress here. 
Historically, Brazil was uh, very strong in uh, sugar, gold, and cotton. Uh, now they made a pivot to the steel industry. They they are the ninth largest steel producer in 2018. I think overall, Brazil economy. I think they were struggling a little bit. Now they're doing pretty okay. I think we we should expect an uptick in second half of 2021. So with that, let's jump into Pag Seguro Digital. Take us to the Pags. You know they are. You know they are, they promote innovative solutions, financial services and payments. They are the market leader, and they have number of uh, merchants here. Overall, I think they are in a nice position here. Thirty-six dollars stock. Stock tumbled big time, and market cap is around twelve point two billion dollars. As you look at a three-year chart here, almost three-year chart. Stock is up and down. You can see this here. Any time stock drops like this, this is COVID-19 time. Stock dropped big time. Picked up again. Stock dropped back in May. Pick, pick, picked back up again. Now it's uh, dropping again. So this stock is uh, known to these uh, tumbles. It tumbles, bounces back, tumbles, bounces back. Look at the extent of the tumble here. Very big tumble here. I think it's a really um, very big tumble here. We should really look at and see if it's good to buy at these levels. It looks like a bargain, and let's jump in and see if it's really good here. From a news perspective, you know, from a big, uh, if you look through the news media, they're not covering this very well. They're not explaining why it's a drop in. Um, generally, you know, their earnings were good. It's a fundamentally strong company. Uh, general general news is really it's a great to buy at this time, um, and they also had a quarterly earnings here. They missed a little bit, but they did very well from a revenue perspective. So overall, by looking at this, uh, stock has tumbled. CEO has a you know the the chairman of the board, a principal is executive office officer. He's got a good track record. Nothing to worry about as far as company is concerned. Now let's jump in and look at uh, competitive competitors. Uh, actually, all the Brazil stocks here are not really competitors. As you look through here, if you look at Brazil, what's going on in Brazil? What are the top ADRs or the stocks listed in America? As you look through here, we've got ERJ here. Top stock did nicely in one year, 303 percent. And right now, as you can look through here, RSI is a little high. Any any pullback here in ERJ, you you can buy some, and then you got PBR, SID, um, you know some of these companies. Um, I think these are all good secular trend right now. Uh, right now, as you can see here, you know um, PBR is on a higher or it's a little higher RSI, but you could buy stocks like SID and Whale. I think these are in a good level here with the low RSI, as you can see here. You know, it's good to buy some of these companies and also BRFS. I think it's a good one. Also, I think uh, nice sales growth. Look at the sales growth for BRFS here, um, and also RSI a little high. It's a good company, and then you got few more here. Um, EBR, GGB, one of my favorite steel company here. Very low price, nice sales growth, and as we look through here. Uh, they got lower RSI. You could buy stocks like GGB and sock it away. And as you look through here, we got our company packs all the way over here. Look here, thirty-six dollars stock here. Nice sales growth, nice gross margin, satisfies rule of forty, um, and valuation is high uh, right now. I think as you can see here, IV percentile is high, very volatile. You could uh, sell some put option if you are uh, up to it. A uh, little, little risky though, but uh, you'll get some nice money in a put premium if you sell some put option. Look at here. Look at the way stock tumbled big time here. That's why you wonder here: should I buy here, take advantage? And then we got here one more uh, Stone Co. Again, fintech play here. Stock also dropped, uh, as you can see here, um, 3.3 percent. Not as steep as uh, Pags, but there's a big drop here. This has been dropping for a while, so I think we should take advantage of uh, this drop here. Scoop up probably, you know, Pags as well as a little bit of Stone Co. and suck it away, and take it from there. There is a heavy competition in fintech in Brazil. So with that, let's jump in here. And look at uh, 
PAGs, their fundamentals. As you look through PAGs here, it was a $29 stock back in 2019. Um, it, it did very nicely, as you can see here. Um, and it became $19 stock back in 331. This is the COVID days. Uh, stock dropped big time, then picked back up again and did nicely. And as you look through your sales, pretty consistent sales. It's been increasing its sales and revenue. That's always good to know. And as you look through here, quarter over quarter revenue change or sales change, nice quarter over quarter sales change that tells you they're grabbing the market share from the competition and growing the sales. From an earnings per share perspective, last quarter they surprised on the negative side. Um, that's why, you know, I just, uh, you know, stock is a little bit not doing great uh, in last month or so. And as you scan through here, they got nice cash. Don't need to worry. Enough cushion here. They can survive any uh, downtime. And as you look through here, gross margin positive company. I mean, a little bit, you know, Brazil is a very stiff in competition. That's why gross margin, as you can see here, contracted a little bit. These guys are giving deep discount to acquire merchants. That's why gross margin took a little bit hit here. I think Wall Street did not like this also. As you look through here, company not making, uh, company is actually making money, net margin positive, as you can see here. That's also good. And as you scan through, uh, ROE, return on equity is good. Return on asset is not very good, but it's okay, it's positive. And, uh, you know, it's a little expensive from an earnings per share perspective, but from a price to sales perspective, it's okay, not very expensive. So that's the overall, you know, PAG what's going on, what are the fundamentals. I think overall, if you look through this, look at the way it's growing its top line here. I like this. And they're also doing nicely. They got a lot of cash here. They can improve gross margin a little bit. They're net margin positive company. That's a good story. Overall, from a fundamental perspective, it checks out. I think it's a good company. We can uh, you know, invest in it and go from there. And if you look at the financial statements here, as you scan through here, um, there is a vaccination rate is increasing in, in, in Brazil that can help uh, this company. As you look through here, the secular shift from cash to electronic digital transaction, that should help this company. And also they are doing very well in terms of PAG Bank. The client surpassed 11 million million here. That's also good. This is also a bank, e-commerce, pay, play, payment processor, all in one. Think of something like a square and a little more with their e-commerce play. And, you know, they've been doing nicely in terms of uh, their analytics, their, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, their ability to do some of these due diligence using using artificial intelligence. I think it's a good, their credit for portfolio also did very well. And as you can look through here, they're, they're acquiring the revenue. They're doing nicely up uh, 75%. And total credit card in industry grew by 52%. But look what uh, PAG did. They grew by 89% in their TPV. That's a very good number here. They're out, outperforming the industry. And their active number of cards also increased uh, to 104 uh, times. That's also good. Overall, by looking at their transcript here, company is doing nicely. You know, they missed on the earnings, but uh, you know, but the revenue beats. So that's a you know highlight here. I think uh, company did well. Um, looking at what they reported back in August 13, which is not too far away, not too far back. So with that, let's jump in here. Look at uh, the performance uh, through the years. As you look through here, the company uh, founded back in 2018, um, you know, did not do very well in 2018. But 2019 and 2020, they did great, as you can see here, 82%, 66%. In 2021, after this huge tumble here, they, they are down 35%. So that's why I think it's uh, you know really good to understand what's going on here, what should you do. Let's look at monthly performance here as you scan through here. 
this company is uh, not afraid of tumbles. It's been tumbling big time. Look at March here, tumbled big time, 38%. Look here, they came back nicely. Again, tumble, come back, tumble, bounce back. So this is not any new to this company. They're used to this game here. I think they can come back again from this huge big tumble here. Look, we had similar type of tumble back in March. This is the COVID days. And now we got here a weekly performance. From a weekly performance perspective, as you can see here, more uh, green than red, but there are some deep red here, and stock has managed to come back again. And if you look at the daily performance, look here, we got a huge drop here, 19% drop in one day. Look at the volume. We had a huge, huge, huge volume here, 17.35 million shares traded. I think there are smart money here, slowly acquiring and buying, taking advantage of this. And retail traders like you and I will uh, throw, throw the towel and shy away. That's what's going on here. I would take advantage, acquire and buy this share slowly and accumulate a nice position, suck it away. So with that, uh, let's look at monthly performance pattern here. Look here, we got uh, right now we are in October, big tumble. As you look through a pattern perspective, look what's going on in October last year, September, October. Again, drop, drop again in uh, 2019, drop again 2018. So it looks like around September, September, October is a little bit tough time for this company historically. And it manages to come back in the November, December time frame. Um, so that's the pattern here. Anytime you see a huge big drop here, uh, so 29% drop. We saw one more 20% drop, came back nicely. 38% drop, COVID days, came back nicely. So this company is not afraid of these drops here. That's why I feel confident this drop is also will pass and, you know, will be, you know, will, will be handsomely rewarded if you buy the stock um, at these levels. And now let's look at uh, some more details. Um, and look at the chart here. We got uh, a four-year weekly chart of PAGS here. Look at look at the chart. I love looking at these type of charts. You can make a lot of money with the, this type of charts here. Anytime stock drops here, look here, came back very nicely. Drop, huge drop, came back nicely, even stronger. Now there is a big, big drop here. I'm sure right now it will also come back here. It's uh, below its uh, 200 period moving average here. I'm sure uh, this will come back here. They have done many times here. They came below 200 day moving, 200 period moving average. In this case, 200 week moving average, but they managed to come back nicely. So I would say, you know, even though this candle looks very uh, scary, but uh, don't be afraid, you know, keep uh, socking it away, accumulate slowly, that will serve you well. Look what happened here, uh, stock is, uh, RSI became overbought here, stock came around tumbling. Uh, RSI became very low here, stock came back up again. Right now we're in low, we are in low RSI scenario here. This should also come back nicely. That's why I feel confident it's a good time to buy PAG slowly. They're gonna figure out this market uh, competition from this new IPO um, and they're gonna do well. Next, let's look at a one-year chart here. Look what's going on. Huge, huge tumble here. Last uh, month or so, this company did not, did not do well. And chart is ugly right now. There is no need to look at the chart. Chart is very, very, very ugly. There is nothing that tells you you can buy the stock right now. That's when you know we have to go against the normal, natural, conventional wisdom and buy slowly like these big investors do. And now let's look at um, option um, chain here. See what option markets are telling us. From an option market perspective, look here, stock is at $36 here. Uh, look at the um, strike price around 36. So we got here uh, $42, there's a huge option volume here um, and a huge open interest. And look here, we got uh, 47.5 huge open interest here. And we got some more open interest as we go down here. So in the option market, folks are betting the stocks will go higher um, by um, in in by January. That's why you know we should uh, you know put some money here and go from there. Even in November, like you know say 41 days out, there is expectation it will go up or down by seven dollars. 
and this expectation will go up or down by uh, four dollars you know in uh, next six days or so so that's why i feel like by looking at the options market here there are more folks betting this uh, this packs will go higher by looking through the option open interest here that tells you there are a lot of uh, folks who want the stocks to go higher and they are showing some interest to buy call options at a higher price and look through the put open interest here as you scan through here um, we don't have too much as not as much as call there is some open interest around the 3740 area here but you know folks maybe you know hedging or even uh, you know taking some um, you know precautions to have some uh, put options bought here so overall I feel like you know there is a positive vibe here uh, folks are really uh, scooping up these call options at a higher strike price which indicates um, there is a good feeling about this stock here and now if you look through option statistics here see uh, we got 144,000 call contracts and 30,000 put contract so outsized call contracts that makes the put call ratio as 0.2 that's also a bullish here there are more folks who are betting the stocks will stock will go higher and as you scan through here vwap is 39 even though stock is at 36 vwap indicates uh, there is a, a great tendency the stock can go to 39.38 uh, pretty soon so with that let's jump in here so look at you know make sense of all these things right so packs drop big time there is not too much news in the market what should i do by looking through this there is a secular trend um, especially in brazil and folks are shifting away from cash to um, you know electronic or digital payments and this company can do soup to nut digital payment they are the bank they are the e-commerce play they are the payment processor i think they take both sides of the you know credit card processing here that's where they can make some money here and they got this pack bank that has surpassed 11 million 11 million clients you know that's a good good news here they are also a bank and number of active cards indexed here i think they increased four times that's also good and the big news here is really uh, this uh, get net in brazil they are going to start trading so everybody is afraid hey you know what number three player uh, they are getting going public and getting more uh, money from public market what will happen to number five player here that's what folks are worried about but i think that's a good time to buy um, you know especially given pag uh, drop big time along with stone co i would say buy both a little bit and suck it away but you know surely buy packs and take advantage of this huge big tumble in the share price so with that um, i think take advantage here you know buy slowly you don't need to rush and you know do a big signature buy buy slowly accumulate and take it from there so with that thank you very much happy investing and trading please subscribe